Qu'est-ce qu'on connaît du foot What do we know about football La Ligue des Champions. The Champions League. Le montant des transferts. Rising transfer Les fees. Jeering from the stands. La violence. Violence. Le business. Big business. Vous avez raison, c'est ça. You're right. That's all part of the game. Et moi, je vais vous parler. But I'm going to talk about something else. Je vais vous parler des valeurs. I'm going to talk about true values. Des hommes. About the men. Look me in the eyes. You can use football to educate people, to pass on progressive ideas while chasing a ball, to promote democracy while scoring goals, a fine political manifesto. In 1980, I was 14 years old, and I had no idea Brazil was still a military dictatorship. I had no idea that at São Paulo, the players had decided to break free and fight for democracy. Their leader, Socrates. Captain of the Seleção and of Corinthians, Socrates, Socrates here of the people, and du Brésil. of all Brazil. Vitória, 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 Corinthians do meu coração. Tu és religião de janeiro a janeiro. Ser corintiano é ir além de ser ou não ser o primeiro. Ser corintiano é ser também. Socrates was a fabulous player and a really kind man. The doctor was a marvelous person. Here we all call him the doctor. As a player, a doctor, a professional, a public figure, a political personality, in everything, Socrates was a wonderful human being. If you were to ask me if Socrates was the best player in Corinthians history, I'd answer no. Rivellino was far better. Rivellino is in the Brazil team of the century, but Socrates was by far the most singular. He had an atypical physique, very tall, with very thin legs. But he knew how to use it to dribble the ball and run the game in such a magical way. Another thing I should add is Socrates loved playing football, but he didn't like talking football. I had trouble seeing him as my big brother. To me, he was an idol. When he came to the house, I'd listen to him discussing things, and it took a time for me to realize that this was really my brother. He was so important, not just for our family, but for the whole country as well. You can draw a parallel, not really ideological or political, but more symbolical between Socrates' image and that of Che Guevara, an image of a revolutionary. My generation fought against the dictatorship. Many were arrested, thrown in jail, and tortured. Many also left the country. We were romantic, naive revolutionaries. Naive because we faced bullets with our bare chests. A definition of Corinthians democracy? Corinthians democracy was the voice of Brazilian sport. 
Corinthians' democracy was the voice of football, the voice of sport, in a struggle to re-democratize the country. That's what Corinthians' democracy was. Until that time, we were slaves. Professional footballers were slaves. Then, Corinthians' democracy burst onto the scene. We were lucky enough to form a group that had political awareness and an awareness of its duties and obligations. At that time, Corinthians' democracy grouped together in historical circumstances a doctor who was intelligent and a very talented player, Socrates. A young 19-year-old rebel by the name of Casagrande, a long-haired guy who, after becoming a champion, was arrested for possession of marijuana. A black player, a nice guy, and smart too, called Vladimir. And a sociology graduate from the University of Sao Paulo, Adelson Montero Alves who had no experience as a president of a football club, but who took over the running of the sporting side of the team. What were we going to do? No idea. No idea. But I knew what we couldn't do. I knew we couldn't continue living like we were. We had to end authoritarianism. We had to break with conservatism. So what did we do? We started defining things together. The first meeting was at the beginning of the season. It was supposed to last 15 to 20 minutes with all the players there. We won't decide for you. We'll decide as a group. Socrates took the floor and said, that's what we're missing here, exactly that. We'll decide things together. That meeting, went on for hours. It was never-ending. Some of them started dozing off because they couldn't concentrate anymore. Some of them left. But the more enthusiastic carried on discussing. They never stopped. Never. We never stopped talking together. And we worked out, as a group, how we should proceed. We started discussing things, and it created a really convivial atmosphere. Each of us started giving his opinion and expressing his feelings. We put in place a new management model. And what was this new management model? The club wasn't just about the players. The whole group, masseurs, stewards, doctors, trainers, coaches, everyone, everyone had a vote, and the majority would win. Self-management, debate, swapping ideas, voting. One man, one vote. Football is a laboratory of how life should be. Beautiful. But in a military dictatorship, they had to be crazy to believe in it. The beginning of the democracy of this movement was during a tour to Japan. We traveled for 30 hours, 26 hours flying and 4 hours of connections, 30 hours in all. 
We got there, and Casa Grande was all lovesick. He just started with a new girl, about three days before, and he was head over heels in love. And he said to us, we need a vote. Why? Because I want to fly back. We'd only just got there, and he already wanted to leave. So what did we do? We voted. All of us. Everyone. Messrs, doctors, stewards. We had to vote. Could Casa Grande leave or should he stay? Socrates said, we must vote to let him go. It's a unique moment in his life. He's in love. Then they asked my opinion, and I said, no, he should stay. I'm sad about leaving my sons behind, but I'm here because I'm a professional, so he must stay. Some voted no, some voted yes, and in the end, the majority decided he should stay. Basically, our aim was to democratize expression. Our group worked in the football world, and we decided to vote on everything. Everything needed to be discussed. They'd even vote on when the bus would stop for a toilet break. They voted on going for a pee. No, 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 don't stop. We don't have time. We'd meet up and discuss philosophy. We'd discuss politics, all kinds of things. We were a real study group. We'd talk about literature, for example. They hired a psychotherapist to work with the whole team, Dr. Flavio Kovacs, who set up group therapy sessions. Socrates got bored always being with top sportsmen. So on Friday and Saturday lunchtimes, they'd invite composers, singers, a famous painter, a renowned architect, a top filmmaker, to talk with them. And Socrates was delighted. If he had a good conversation, then on Sunday he'd play really well. In fact, you can compare it with what happens in society. You take several unhappy couples, and in with them, you put a really happy couple who are in love. It contaminates the whole group. That's how it was with us. Other teams have supporters. At Corinthians, we have militants. They sing louder. They're much rowdier. You're Corinthians when you're the champion, Corinthians when you lose, Corinthians when you draw, Corinthians when you win. We kept our movement going in spite of everyone. A lot of people were against us, the press, São Paulo businessmen, and the whole of Brazil. They all thought we were anarchists. Everyone was against Corinthians and their democracy. They even called us bearded commies. <laughs> Corinthians' democracy concerned football, but not only football. Corinthians' democracy embodied the dream of every Brazilian of removing the dictatorship and seeing a return to universal suffrage. The Corinthians managed to change quite a few things, and Corinthians' democracy became a benchmark. The high bourgeoisie dragged us through the dirt. Some sports writers who were against democracy openly criticized us. On all our shirts it was written, Corinthians democracy. We saw it as a challenge, and it won us a lot of sympathy from all the players at other clubs. Everyone wanted to come and play for Corinthians. And on this shirt were splashes of blood, like this. It resembled the Coca-Cola logo. That concept of blood, a symbol for Corinthians, was a joyous blood that you offered up. It was a sacred shirt. It was seen as beautiful, as belonging to an entire people. Yeah, cool.
The people knew that they had once voted, but it was so long ago. They were scared of voting again. They hadn't voted for such a long time. They weren't sure whether the army would let us vote. On the 15th, vote. Vote was important to the players. They were all excited. Wow, it's great. They all refused the dictatorship, and the people finally saw others standing up to it. What's more, there were top footballers who scored loads of goals. So in the next day's newspapers, there were photos with the slogan, on the 15th, vote. In Sao Paulo, but also all across Brazil. We knew that the more people we could get to vote in the provincial elections, the more we'd harm the dictatorship. But we had to be discreet, do it in a subliminal way. We didn't urge people to vote for anyone in particular, just to vote. Plus the club shirt bore the words Corinthian democracy. So vote. And people did. The dictatorship lost in all the major parts of the country, Sao Paulo, Rio, Minas, Pernambuco, Rio Grande do Sul. In every province, candidates from the true opposition won. Win or lose, but always with democracy. In 1982, I was just a kid, but I'd have loved to raise that banner in that Sao Paulo stadium. We went onto the pitch in front of 40,000 people with a banner that read, win or lose, but always with democracy. This togetherness brought some freshness to Brazilian football, a freshness like there's never been in Brazilian football. And they had the courage to go onto the pitch on the last day of the championship with that banner, win or lose, but always with democracy. That was a big hit. It was fantastic. It was wonderful going out there with that banner to try to turn the Brazilian people in favor of direct presidential elections. They showed that football could be used for something great. And we won and won and won and won until we won the Sao Paulo championship, which was big at the time, bigger even than the Brazilian championship. The Sao Paulo championship was the big one, and that team won it. In 1982, Corinthians Democracy was champion, with a shirt with Corinthians Democracy on it. The general summoned us again and told us not to wear it. We went to the meeting, gave him a shirt saying, it's nothing, it's only football. All Brazil supported the movement. We were proud, proud of raising the political awareness of the Brazilian people. There was a permanent party mood, and Socrates took the risk of saying, in front of two million people gathered on the cathedral square, that if direct presidential elections weren't accepted by the regime, he'd go to play in Italy. But he would stay in Brazil. It was brave saying, if they agree to presidential elections, I won't go to Italy. When he made that threat, that blackmail, he was pretty sure he'd be leaving. His transfer abroad was already underway, but he, in his heart, he was sure to stay. How many great players do you know who tie their transfer abroad to a constitutional amendment?
It must be taken into account how much Corinthians' democracy influenced the spirit of the Brazil team at the 1982 World Cup. It was a fabulous generation that was influenced by Corinthians' democracy personified by Socrates. The coach, Tele Santana, had undying admiration for Socrates and for his free thinking because Socrates respected the freedom of everyone. People came to realize how football could get across certain messages. And that was a big advantage, because a great deal of communication was suppressed at the time. But who could suppress football? You can not like football in Brazil, but if you don't understand the importance of football in daily life in Brazil, then you'll never understand Brazil. Calling religion the opium of the people is fine. But when you say the same thing about football, carnival, and all the other cultural and festive occasions, then you're not respecting the intelligence of the people. Socrates was so generous in the present he gave to Corinthians. He passed away on the day Corinthians won the championship. We held a minute silence. The two teams stood round the center circle. Palmeiras on one side, Corinthians the other. I can show you the photo. Everyone in Pecambu Stadium, fists raised. It was a day in my life, as it was for all Corinthians, that was both happy and very sad. Or as Socrates would have said, a very happy, sad day. We don't like to change the world. It's only human. And when you get millions on their feet just by scoring a goal, you suddenly think you can do it. After that, you need ideas, courage, social and political awareness. Dr. Socrates, rest in peace.